I'm Amanda Demopoulos. I'm your illustrious chief scientist, in case you haven't met me already. It's a privilege to come and chat with you all. We've really done an amazing job exploring and investigating the seeps along the Cascadia margin, and partly that's due to all of your hard work, so I appreciate you joining me here today. Coming to this cruise, we put a lot of work on in the front end to try to do these experiments on the bottom of the ocean. It's really been a challenge to get it all ready and get it down there. At this point, I'm pretty pleased with the way it went. This expedition has been an absolute pleasure to take part in. Both the ship's crew and the excellent team in charge of our ROV have been a delight to work with. In terms of the samples we've collected, the areas we looked at far suppressed my most optimistic expectations. We've collected over 900 samples. We'll get a lot of clams or mussels or the tube worms, but we've seen a variety of fish. We've seen crabs, the urchins, sea cucumbers, so there's been a lot more down there and every dive is something new. So once we get back in the lab, we'll get those samples dried and processed and sent off for analysis on the mass spectrometer and it'll take a few months from now, but we're really excited to see the data when it comes back. Now that we've spent about three weeks poking the bottom of the ocean floor looking for rocks, basically fingerprints of what has happened over the last thousand years, we now get to sort of open the box and figure out really what did occur and get some of the answers that we're actually studying here in present day. We've covered a lot of ground. <laughs> in our transits, we're trying to add to places where that have not been mapped at all. The past three weeks since we uh, departed Astoria, we've covered a little over 2,300 line kilometers. The imagery that we do see has really helped guide us where to dive and where some of these seeps are actually coming out of the seafloor. This is what we have mapped so far in this area. That eventually will go into a database, so we'll be adding to that. Yeah, so in the past there was the fear that these deep sea seeps or seeps below 100 meters might have a strong influence uh, on the methane uh, concentration of the atmosphere. But we nowadays establish that this is not true. This might be still valid for very shallow areas, for example, the Arctic regions. But here in water depth greater than 100 meters, the chance that methane from these methane seeps reach the sea surface is very, very low. To work in the lab is one thing, to be out here in the environment, and you're sitting there, you're putting stuff over the side, and you look out, and there's whales just rolling over top, one after another. As that's a real tree when we see dolphins, we've gotten to see whales. Well, we got a great collection of very good cores, very good biological samples, and we bring home roughly six terabyte of data that now need to be analyzed. So this will keep some of my master's students busy for quite some time. All of the work that we do starts out with a fundamental amount of curiosity. In this case, the key component of what we're doing out here is all about the bubbles. And what is happening with those bubbles, the fate of the methane gas as it escapes from the seafloor, moves into the water column, what's happening to it, and all of the different tools that we bring to bear to answer those types of questions. After three weeks out here, we've really brought it all together. The biology of what's living here, the geology that anchors it, and the chemistry that fuels it. And with cutting-edge technology, we'll be able to reveal the secrets of these seeds.